Welcome. My name is Alessio Maggiorelli. I'm a data scientist, and this is uh, my presentation about methods of report generation in clinical trials using R and NIDA. So a short introduction about us. Uh, we are the biostatistical group of the Coordination Center for Clinical Trials in Düsseldorf, and the Coordination Center is part of the medical faculty of the Heinrich Heine University in Germany. Usually clinical trials are highly regulated, so we provide support in executing clinical trials. Our history with R starts in 2001. Uh, before 2001, we basically, this was basically the way we conducted statistical reporting. So we had, we had our three sources of uh, information, the study protocol, the database, and the note of files, if they existed. And with all of these three sources, we prepared the data um, or as Hadley Wickham likes to call it, data wrangling, uh, which is just a lovely term in my opinion. And we created tables and plots out of that. And this was usually done in SPSS and Excel. After that, we switched to Word for formatting and adding some final additional explanational text. So with the introduction of R in 2001, SPSS and Excel was switched for R. Uh, and between R and Word, we had to do a lot of copy and pasting from the R console, especially regarding tables. Now this got redundant with Swift or basically NIT R in 2014, um, because now all of these four steps could be done from one markdown document um, uh, with R and NIT R. We used uh, at that point LaTeX as a formatting language but um, last year we switched to Markdown because Markdown is a little bit easier to understand and also easier to write. A few notes on our history with R. So R was and still is not the standard in the medical field. Mostly SPSS, Excel and SAS is still used and switching to R was regarded as an unnecessary change from the norm. So people were a little bit never minded. Um, however, there are, of, of course, a lot of advantages. One is that the software is just free. And um, also the fact that you can control the whole report from one markdown document basically is a huge plus regarding reproducibility and transparency. So we never have problems with uh, inspections, for example. And also automation is, of course, another advantage in which, uh, uh, which I want to talk about more now. Uh, so let's dive into methods and specifically periodic reports. Um, periodic reports or safety reports are usually done in three to six month intervals within a clinical trial. So you have to do them over and over again. And with NITR, we implemented a template for periodic reports so that only one code chunk has to be changed and the rest is done automatically. So here's an example of how this might look. Um, this is the code chunk you have to change. Um, this is, for example, the path uh, where the data can be found and the date of the last um, export date and so on and so on. If you change that manually and then knit the, uh, the report, the knit R will do the rest automatically. Now, this, of course, uh, saves a lot of time. We are also currently creating a code library for the purpose of speeding up repetitive tasks regarding reporting. Um, the code library contains functions to automatically generate nicely formatted tables and plots. And usually we use packages like Cable, Panda, and ggplot for that. Um, over time, we plan to standardize our process of reporting in cl clinical trials in a comprehensible way and uh, put all of these functions uh, for free use in a package so that everybody can use them. Um, an example of how that might look in a final analysis report um, is provided with uh, as a downloadable resource, a resource. I provided you here with an, an excerpt of our statistical analysis of COMBINE, which is a clinical trial about a combination treatment of patients with schizophrenia. Now, we also face, of course, some challenges. Some R packages can be unstable. Uh, this can usually uh, be there's a workaround by either using base R or just using stable versions of R packages uh, by implementing some few lines of codes. And also big reports can be a problem if you want to do um, small changes and 
want to look how they uh, how they look in the final report because big reports take a lot of time to compile now this can be uh, there's a workaround there by using uh, by splitting up the markdown file into multiple components so that you only compile the markdown file you want to uh, take a look at now as an outlook we are currently um, we are currently investigating shiny apps to monitor trial data on the fly now this is especially useful for colleagues who want to take a look at the data but are not familiar with the R terminology. So Shiny, Shiny apps provide them with a nice interface they can use. And um, in addition, we also take a look on the G report and H report um, packages, which are written by Frank Harrell. He did a talk this year in January or February, I think, um, in the R Studio conference, which was really nice. So my suggestion for you would also be to take a look on that. And yeah, that's basically it. If you got any questions or feedback, don't hesitate to send me a mail. I will gladly respond. And um, yeah, thank you for your attention and see you.